Snap wants to throw again. Got a man, throws downfield. Quinn missed the catch. He breaks clear to 50. They're not going to catch him at the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Valosta State. Quinn Robinson on a murder perfect throw, a perfect throw from Graham Craig. He broke there, Tom, and they didn't have a chance. It was, uh, it was over. It was like that. You could have seen that guy's back home. I'm telling you. I mean, he just separate, separate. He like a track meet. The David Dean Show. Your weekly look at Valdosta State University Laser Football. Here's your host, Nick Rocky, along with head coach David Dean, for a look at this week's Laser Football action. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach. The Blazers make the long trip up to Northern Mission and drop a 28-24 decision to Saginaw Valley State University. And coach, uh, I hate to say it, but we've seen that that scenario before in, in the first game of this season we another tough tough loss for your team yeah unfortunately 2012 ends like 2011 finished and uh, it was deja vu you know, yeah. you know last minute of the game the last drive of the game that they have the football and uh, they go down and score and take the lead we were just talking about that team you know an outstanding football team uh, you knew that going in a great quarterback two really we knew one really good receiver but a second little guy comes up and he, he catches double digits against us uh, too you stopped the running game so they had to throw it had three interceptions but he threw four touchdown passes well they threw the ball uh, a tremendous amount and i think a lot of that had to do with us taking away their running game but uh, they were a team that was able to throw the ball last year and I think what people forget about these guys is they lost to the defending national champion in overtime in the playoffs and they also beat the team that played for the national championship last year so they're a very good football team they're a very good football team at home and they had a lot of guys returning and we knew it was going to be a heck of a battle uh, we just did not realize that they were able to throw the ball as well as they could well it was a tough loss it was our first trip up into Michigan uh, you know I said all oh, for two days. It was a beautiful place. We loved it. We loved everything about it. But we didn't get to the major reason we went up there. Uh, that conference is a good conference. It's, it's one that we're not familiar with in the South too much. But you know, it's it's as strong as there is in, in the Division Two area. It is. It's very good. When you talk about Wayne State, who played for the national championship, and then Grand Valley, who's won several, Saginaw Valley. Those three teams are always competing for that conference championship up there, and uh, Saginaw is right up there with them every year. Well, 20, it was a tough 28-24 loss. Uh, got a lot of positive things you can look at, and there's some other things we'll talk about as we get into the show today. We'll be back with the first half highlights in just a moment. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, we uh, get off to a great start. They, they defer to the second half in your offense on that first series. We didn't get any points, but they just flew down the football field, making great, great runs, great throws, catches, everything except the score. Yeah, we executed very well on that first drive and unfortunately didn't didn't finish with a uh, with points and you know, we missed a field goal right there we overthrew a, a little post route into the end zone from about the eight yard line that could have given us a touchdown uh, and then it was, it was really disappointing that we did not get the field goal uh, but they come right back and they drive right back down the field and then they miss a field goal so we exchanged field goals there early and uh, you know I thought for the most part it was two very good football teams going against each other. It was a well-played game. I mean, if it was one that you were in the stands watching, yeah. uh, it was a fun one to watch. Yeah, it was a good one. You just got the feeling this this thing was going to go the distance. You know, there's yeah. not going to be any breathing room for either football team. Both sides knew that. We but, knew it was going to be a fourth qu yeah. four quarter game. Let's get into the first half highlights and take a look at them. The Blazers dressed in their new all-white uh, uniforms. Yeah, we. this is a, a new style for us this year. and. Uh, we got some an all black and an all white uniform, and uh, these are our, our road uniforms here. And you can see right here, their kickoff goes goes into the end zone, and here's our first play of the of the season. A great run here by little freshman Austin Scott. Big time run, delivers a blow there at the end. We come right back, and good to have this guy back. Gerald Ford makes a nice catch from Caden, and then he comes right back and hits Gerald again. Uh, you know, we're clicking pretty well right now. A little zone read that that uh, Caden does a great job of. Gets positive yards, and then we get uh, missed the, the poster out there right before that, and unfortunately we missed the field goal. And again, they do a good job of coming out and you know, working some little play action and short stuff. And 
Early on in the game, we were missing a lot of tackles, as you can see right there. We weren't wrapping up. We were trying to make the big hit, not doing what we were supposed to do. Uh, we got to do a better job of that from the get-go. I think we were really keyed up and trying to go out there and, and knock somebody out instead of playing you know, good fundamental football. Good play here. I thought Jeremy Grable played an outstanding football game. We force them to the field goal and they miss the field goal. And uh, so we come back out and we throw a screen and get about five yards on the screen there to Reggie Lewis. Good blocking out on the perimeter. And then uh, Caden does a nice job here scrambling away and ends up getting the first down. So a little bit of his strength right there, pushing some folks back. Here's our little underneath shovel pass. And Trent McGuire makes a nice run. You can see he carries their defense about seven yards after contact. We're moving well. Good throw and catch here. Shontavious, he was running a curl route, and we have to scramble out a little bit. And then same play that Caden ran a little while ago, and you know, unfortunately right here, when he lands in the end zone there, Caden separated his shoulder at that point, and uh, he was okay to play for a while, but uh, you know, he took another hit a little bit later on, and it began to bother him a little bit, and that's why he didn't play in the second half. But, Again, there you can see we're kind of letting him get away. We, we, we've got him pinned back and we don't, don't make tackles. And then here's one we got to bring down. We got to find a way to make those plays right there. And I think that's the difference in us right now is we're not making those great plays. We've got to find a way to do that. We could have gone up easily, you know, right there 14 to nothing. Big interception here by Ryan Smith off a, off a little tip pass and he makes the interception. And, we come back and we try to throw the ball deep and we just don't put it out there. We put it too far into the field. We end up doing a good job of pinning them down inside the four yard line on a punt. And uh, unfortunately for our defense, they let them off, off the goal line. Gave them a first down, which changed the field position. And then here was one that was just critical, critical mistake. A non-contact, he fumbles the football and gives them the ball. And like all good teams do, they capitalize on that drive down score and uh, tie, tie the ball game up. Our kids credit, you know, they came back and make a nice throw here to, again, to Gerald Ford. We pin them again down here at the, at the four yard line. And, and here's where we've got to do a good job. We've got to keep those guys in there and not allow them to get a first down. And uh, unfortunately they do. We miss a tackle right there and they end up getting the first down. Otherwise, we'd have had them punting, and then they make a mistake, bad snap. We capitalize on it. First play, we run a little zone play to Austin Scott. He makes a great read, lowers his shoulder, breaks the tackle, and gets in the end zone, and, and we go up with a 14-7 lead. And uh, We've got to make a stop here. We can't go in and allow them to get points right here before the half, and we do. They put together a great drive. Uh, they come here on a blitz, and great quarterback. He buys himself time, steps back, and throws the ball right on the money to their great receiver there, and they end up tying us up. We sat on the, on the ball there right there at the end of the half. Unfortunately, we, we should have had the lead, and we didn't. We end up going in tied and gave them a little bit of momentum. Coach, you talk about Austin Scott, a redshirt freshman, I believe, 18 yes. carries, 95 yards, a touchdown. Uh, ran well from the very first play of the football game. It, did you see that in this young young guy? Yeah, we did, and that's why he started. You know, we have a, a really good running yeah. back, Theseus Jackson, who is a, uh, you know, we've suffered a little bit of an ankle injury in in, uh, in the preseason, but we knew Austin Scott had that type of ability, and that's why he carried, he was able to carry the ball for us for 18, 18 times in that game. Yeah, I guess your big three receivers between them had 14 catches. Sean Tavis with four touchdown, Gerald Ford and Quinn with five each. But you mentioned you're still looking for that guy who's going to make that great play to yeah. win a football game. Well, we've, we've got guys that are that are making them, but we just not making them when we need yeah. to, like, like Quinn right there. If he goes up and tries to snatch that ball away with his hands and not use his body, he may get a touchdown right there. And, uh, you know, if we can do that, that, we can go up by 14 at that point. Yeah. Those are the type of plays that we've got to make to start separating ourselves. All right, back with the second half highlights in just a moment. 
Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, the second half, uh, going to the locker room, it's a, a, has been a, a really good football game for both teams. Mistakes by both teams, but big plays by both teams. Uh, any message? I've heard some of you message your football team before games. What, what are you talking about at halftime? Well, the big thing for us was to, to tackle better. You know, we had, to, we had plenty of opportunities to make plays in the backfield, and we let the quarterback slip away. And then offensively, it was – a little bit be a little bit more consistent make big plays on offense we we had some good drives and then we would make some mistakes and uh, the big thing for us was consistency on offense and defense was making those tackles and you've got your injured starter back playing for you he gets injured <laughs> on a touchdown run uh, you have to make a decision that you're going to either leave him in or take him out well, it was a tough decision, but the first game of the season, we got nine more to go. A guy with a separated shoulder, you don't want him to take another shot and it'd be worse. Uh, so we thought the best thing for him was to be able to sit out and, uh, you know, we'll reevaluate it this week and see what happens. All right. Coach, let's watch the second half highlights. You bring in uh, Graham Craig, uh, a transfer from uh, Murray State. Mm -hmm. uh, that first series, and I was telling somebody, you know, that first series looked like he, maybe a bad description, was totally lost. <laughs> but that next series, he just looked like all of a sudden he became totally comfortable with his situation. Well, he was. He, he did an outstanding job. I thought he played a great second half. He gave us an opportunity to, uh, to win the football game. And, uh, you know, I was awfully proud of the way that he, he, he came into play. Uh, they come out here to, to start the second half, and, you know, we... We tried to get our defense to make a statement and not, not let them change the field position. And uh, unfortunately they did. As you can see, they get down in, into here. And uh, this is actually the second series of the half. Uh, we had both exchanged uh, possessions right there and that was their second drive of the second half and they go down and score and take the lead. And then here is our our second series, we throw a little underneath pass there to Reggie Lewis, and here's the second play. And this is what we talked about with our offense, responding, and we did. We came back and hit Shontavious Jones on the little slant route. He makes the catch and uh, takes it the distance, and we immediately tie the game back up. And, uh, you know, from here on out, it was kind of a slugfest. We were going back and forth. Defenses were going at each other, and offenses were going, and it, it became a battle of, of field position. And right now, there, if you weren't there, you didn't know this, but that's a very strong wind that was at their back. And uh, that ended up playing a, a big part in, in the football game, as it turned out. Great throw here to Gerald Ford, converting a, uh, a big play there on, on the corner route, and then just a little Improvisation right there by Graham Craig. Well, what a great job he does of scrambling out. And, you know, unfortunately, we don't score down here. And we take a penalty and have to go back on the first and 15 and end up having to kick the field goal. And then another nice play here by our defense, forcing the, the, the cutback. Again, we did a good job of, of stopping their run, and then they hit us with a little trick play here, the throwback to the running back. And, you know, big, big play for them. They get down there to the three-yard line. And uh, here's Jeremy Grable again with another big stop. And then great play here by Tyler Josie. He reads the little throwback, makes the interception. And right here, boy, we really got a chance to kind of take this game over. And uh, unfortunately, we, we don't do that. Right here, here's one of those big plays that we need to make. We just don't bring that one in. Uh, we start running backwards instead of running down the field and it ends up being incomplete. We end up having to punt the ball. We stop them, get, get the ball back, and then good throw here to uh, Quinn Robertson again. And then here's a nice little run on our sweep. You see Austin's got good speed as he turns the corner. And then this was probably the most critical play of the game, third down. If, if he just leaps forward, he's got the first down and he falls and we end up being short and having the punt. And then uh, they, this gives them the ball and this is the drive that they had to, to win the football game. They convert several third downs on this. You see we're missing tackles, giving them too many yards. Big play here by Tevin Davis, making the tackle in the, in the backfield. And then here it is again, he just scrambles up and hits the good receiver there on the deep post route 
they take the lead. Talking about again, having to respond. And a great return, our kickoff return team does an outstanding job of putting us in good field position. We're outside the 40 yard line. First play here, we run a little crossing route to Gerald Ford. And uh, we throw a couple of incomplete passes. This is our fourth down play. And Graham that really does a nice job here. And you see how close we are to winning this. We're inbounds and we drop it. And if we make that catch, we, we win the ball game. It was a heck of an inning. I say your young quarterback came in and played well. And just, it's just, uh, Coach, I, I told people after the game, I said, you know, I love the Blazers. I, I suffer with losses. I, I just can't imagine what you guys have been through now, as we said, for four straight football games. And I, you know, I guess we can't dwell on it. It happened. And we, whether we lost late or lost early, I guess we, we still lost the football game. We did. You know, we, we've got to find a way to somehow in the fourth quarter to make a first down to, to keep the football and keep it away from their, def, uh, their offense. And then when they do get it defensively, we've got to find a way to stop people. And that's for three straight games. And now the fourth going into this season, we hadn't been able to do that on the last drive of the game. Yeah, just looking for somebody to make the play, and, and I heard, I've heard you talk about that. You know, just look, be the, you've never used the word hero, but you made the, make the hero play or something. Yeah, yeah just we got to find a guy to, to step up and create some type of momentum. And, uh, you know, we had some opportunities, but we just never seized that momentum in the ball game. As you talk to your team after the football game, I, I talk, saw some of them, talked to them briefly. I don't bother them too much, but uh, is it a, is it a down football team right now, more than likely? Well, no question. You know, everybody is, is heard from press and, and people here in, in the town about how good they are and, uh, you know, what a great year this is and how excited they are. And they feel like they let, let the Blazer Nation down, you know, by losing that football game. But what I tried to explain to them was, uh, this is very similar to 2004. Yeah. You know, we go to Albany State, who was a playoff team, losing the last second of the game, and that was the first game of the year, and we were able to run the table. So I think our kids, and, and what I was trying to do was make them realize we still have a chance to win the conference championship. We still have a chance to get in the playoffs. Uh, so we can't let this one loss uh, be the determining factor on the season. All right, Coach. Well said. Thanks very much. We'll be back with the uh, Gander Mountain scoreboard in just a moment. Welcome back to the Gander Mountain scoreboard. And Coach, we don't have many scores to look at. We're going to run through a couple real quick here. Uh, I'll do them reverse order here. Shorter, 31 to 20 over Campbell. Well, Shorter is the new Gulf South Conference team, and they go up and beat a, uh, uh, well, I guess a 1AA, they call it now, football championship subdivision uh, team. Uh, good win for, for Coach Jones and those guys in Rome. West Georgia, uh, Pretty easy, a 55-3 win over Point, which is an NAIA school. That's, this is their second year playing football, and uh, that's, a, that's a good opening win for, for West Georgia. Uh, you know, I, th I think they're a much improved football team, and, uh, you know, they, they caught Point at a good time. They're still early in their program. Yeah. And then uh, West Alabama, 44 to nothing over Clark Atlanta. Well, that's obviously is the team to beat in the Gulf South Conference. Uh, you know, I've said that since we finished the season last year. Uh, they got an outstanding football team, and to walk out there and uh, have a shutout in the first ball game says a lot on their defense. And Fort Valley State, the team that's coming to Valdosta Saturday, we haven't seen them in a few years, 31-23 uh, uh, over Delta State University. That's a big win. Yeah, yeah big win, and they, had, they went to Cleveland to do it. So uh, that tells you a little bit about our, our opponent that's coming in this week. And, uh, you know, it's been a, been a while since we played those guys, so hopefully we're uh, – Hopefully we're going to be up to the challenge and, and playing what looks like to be a very, very good Fort Valley football team. All right, Coach. We'll, we'll have more scores as we get into the season. But, um, you know, I, I look at those scores really and I think, you know, we could have got a W-2. Three, basically three of those four teams knew they had those games won before they put on the <laughs> uniforms. Well, it's, it's always better for us to play yeah. teams that are good football quality teams. It's going to help us down yeah. the road. It's you, you play a little bit more physical football team, but – uh, in the long run, it's going to help you down the stretch. All right, Coach. We'll be back with the Langdale Honda Kia Look Ahead in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Langdale Honda Kia. Look ahead and coach a, a quick look at Fort Valley State coming off a tremendous win, a team you haven't seen in several years. No, it's not. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a team that has improved each and every year. Uh, they've been in the, in the hunt for the playoffs. I think two of the last three years, they're, they're a good quality football team. They get a lot of kids from, from the state of Georgia just like we do. So this will be a, a big game for us. You know, our guys will be playing against a lot of guys that they probably either played with or against in high school. Yep. Well, they always, it's going to be always a fun atmosphere when they come like Albany State. They should probably have a great following coming, hopefully a great crowd there on Saturday night. By the way, it is a 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, our Blazer fans, what a night games, and uh, you and Coach uh, Herb Reinhardt uh, put them on, the, on there for them. <laughs> well, we are. We, we're playing again at night, and, uh, you know, we're excited about being at home, finally getting an opportunity to walk into Baysmore Hyder Stadium and, and play in front of the home crowd. So I know they're going to bring a lot. Hopefully we will, too. There's a lot going on in the – in yep. the city of Valdosta that night, All so right. hopefully they'll be there. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Blazers lose a tough one on the first game of the season, but Fort Valley State, it's always a fun game, great atmosphere. They're going to bring a huge crowd. We want Blazer fans to be out there Saturday night at 7 o'clock for that kickoff. Valdosta State and Fort Valley State. From head coach David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. I hope you have a wonderful week.